they say, when I, when, when I get to heaven, God will remember I bought a seat in that church. God will remember that at least I used to give my offering. It's not about that. Wow. It's not about that. No, God will remember that I used to sing. Yes, he gave you the talent to sing. But did you meet the person of grace? Wow. What a root shock some of us will have when the time and the rapture comes and you begin to ask yourself, why did I remain? You didn't remain because you didn't keep the rules. You didn't remain because you did wrong. You didn't remain because you broke the law. You just didn't meet the person of grace. That's all. You haven't accepted that grace is free. It's so simple to you that you feel you need to save yourself. It's so simple to you that you need, you feel you need to be good to receive it. Wow. This is what I used to believe if I keep the Ten Commandments. And in, in my church, they used to teach us, Keep them at your heart. You shall not steal. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not. You shall not. So we kept a set of rules for years. And yet we sinned. Hello? We kept a set of rules. Diligently looking at the law. And we forgot there was a person of grace. That simply says receive. And you shall be set free. Many in the church are seated. Trying to save themselves. One day Jesus encounters a young man. And this young man, he looks at what Jesus is doing and he says, I want to be part of this guy. I want to be part of this Jesus. What he teaches. I've got the money. I've got what it takes. I'm sure he walked up to Jesus in all his pomp and all his time. And he wanted to make Jesus realize, look Jesus, I've got the money I can buy. This so-called salvation we talk about. Amen. Amen. And he comes up to Jesus and he says, what should I do in order for me to be saved? Jesus looked at him and he realized, this guy thinks he can buy salvation. This guy thinks he can do anything. Because in the mind of the young man, he had grown up being taught, keep the commandments. Do right. Do not bend from the law. If you bend, go and buy a calf. Bring it to the high priest. Let him pray over it. Redeem your sin. That is what he knew. So when he came to Jesus, he came with that mindset. What must I do to receive eternal life? And so Jesus told him, go and keep your set of rules. Go and keep your set of rules. And the young man says, which rules are you talking about? And Jesus said, go and keep the commandments. They shall not kill that shall not commit adultery. That shall not, that shall not, go and keep them. And the young man says, what are you talking about? I have kept those. I have kept my commandments all the days of my life. Even as I come up to you, I come from the foundation of the Pharisees. There is nothing I've left out. So what, what are you trying to tell me? And Jesus said, if you want to be saved, go and save. Everything you've got. I'm here to tell some of you, you need to sell what you have learned from the old, old schools. You need to sell up what you've been taught by time in memorial that you need to keep a set of rules, that you need to keep a set of commands, and yet you come out and you don't know the person of grace. He told him, go and sell it up. That what you have learned. He thought he was talking about his money because the man was rich. Am I talking to somebody? Matthew 19, he was talking to this young man. Go and sell it. Some of you, you need to sell what you have learned. You need to sell what you have believed. You need to let go of what you have taken as the gospel. Keeping of a set of rules. Is not Christianity. Knowing the person of Christ, you will not struggle to begin to make that law have purpose in your life. When you have the person of Christ, you will not kill because love will overshadow you. When you have the person of Christ, you will not tell yourself, Paddy, you 
life for we are living in poverty. My family was in poverty. Because you realize grace has already worked it for you. It is your will to remain in poverty. God has already paid it for you. You don't have to remain in poverty. You don't have to toil to receive Jesus Christ. You don't have to do anything. He said you don't need to do anything. I have saved you already. I have done it already. There is no one man that can go again to the cross. There is none of us that can do anything to be saved. All we need to do is believe. And it seems so simple. Even to my forefathers it seemed very simple. And so they said, uh-uh. Bazamba kuchimu atika wauza kuti. All they need to do is believe. So they need to pass malamuro. Malamuro kumi ni ambani kuyakonga. Olomwana mnyumba mkapasa malamuro. By this time you must be here. By that time you must do this. Mzona jimwana zapukanya malamuro from one to the end. Begin to love that child. Begin to show yourself as grace to that person. Begin to show the love of Christ, your care, your availability to an impossible situation. And that impossible situation is going to meet grace. And grace will abound. The churches today, you judge people by what they wear. Let me tell you one thing. God does not love us the same. God does not love us the same. He didn't make us the same. He uniquely made all of us so he could uniquely love all of us. Completely. So if your friend likes a certain outfit which you cannot wear, muleke, that's the way God loves them. And we love to look at the outer appearances. We love to look at things that don't matter. And we love to look at things that don't make sense. And so we miss the love of God. We try to try and find a way. How can I be saved? I think I'll start I'll start saving, start sweeping the sanctuary. Listen, when you meet the person of grace, service will not be something I need to tell you. Soon again, you need to come to church. When you meet him, his love will be so great in you that you can't stay away from him. His love will be so real that even when you come in his presence, you won't want to see a paper. You will say, God, I'm cleaning for you. Not for prophetess, not for anybody, but for the, for the God that I serve. Many of us have come to serve human beings and have missed the grace. Many of us have come to serve buildings and we have failed to miss to serve the grace himself. If you don't have the grace inside you, now to change the example of Patikis, a prayer of change, prayer of Bolo Pepe, prayer of Bolo Piange, Azmai Makamaka, prayer of Bolo Piange. You are not saved. If you fail to obey God, you are not saved. You are keeping set of rules. If you fail to follow Christ, you are not saved. I want you to understand. When you are saved, nobody tells me to wake up. Even when I'm limping. Even when I'm broken. Even when I'm... <laughs> even when I don't have food. Even no matter what is happening to me. Because I know whose I am. You can't tell me to go to church. I'll get up myself. You can't tell me, Mama, rest. I'll tell you I'll rest when I get to heaven. I've got work to do. My God has sent me. And I'm obedient to the call of my God. I am very, very practical on that one. Many of you have told me, why don't you rest? I say, I'll rest when God give me rest. But now, he has told me, the harvest is ready. But the harvester is still trying to get himself saved. The harvester is busy laboring to save themselves. Who told you you can save you? One day Jesus was walking upon the shores and he sees a lot of activity on the shores of Galilee and he begins to wonder, what are these people doing? Everybody was trying to save themselves. Everybody was busy. And he sees these people and he begins to speak to them. But why are you people struggling? There is an easier way. And the minute the women heard, there's an easier way. Because a woman, anywhere where it's easier, they'll be there. He said, ah, there is an easier way. 
Which way? Soon and very soon, people began to throng around Jesus. As he began to tell them there is an easy way out. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to. And then he notices that there are boats upon the, the river. And the fishermen are out there. And they are, they are cleaning their nets. And he says, okay, let me go to that boat. It belongs to Peter. This guy has struggled. This guy has struggled so long. He knew the character of Peter. He knew the way that Peter lived. He knew like he knows all of you. Tell your neighbor, he knows you. There is nothing. He background There is nothing about you. God doesn't know you. You are trying to save yourself. You are trying to struggle, to toil. Like Peter toiled all night to save his own life. He toiled. Some of you, you are toiling with a, a broken relationship. Some of you, you are toiling with a broken marriage. Some of you, you are toiling with a broken relationship with a child. You are toiling with a certain weakness in your life and you are trying to save yourself. Accept yourself. Hello, somebody. Some of you, this is why we have the church full of wicked human beings that come to keep a set of rules. When you say Jesus wants you to be saved, uh -uh. <laughs> they look like I am. I've done everything you think. I've grown up in the church. I've kept all the rules. Tell them it's not a set of rules. You can't save yourself. You need a savior. And the savior has already come for you. A savior has already saved you. You have toiled, it's too much. You have tried, it's too much. You have done everything you know, it's too much. It's time you know that there is the love of God that loves you unequally. God didn't say I've come for the Christians. Uh-uh. God didn't say I've come to die for the believers of believers. God didn't say I've come because of the born again of the born again. God didn't say I've come for the Catholics because they are Catholic. I have come for the Baptist. I have come for the seven. God said I have come to the world to say. As you are seated there, Jesus has saved you already. As you are seated there, oh salon dolola. Oh sayamba kuti ah, never nezo kuti ni kambe kuti because because God is not interested in your because God is interested in your assessment of who you are, on your assessment of what you struggled with. What have you labored all these years for to try and be good? You can't be good. 
without God. Amen. You can't be good without God. You can never make it without the Savior. Amen. And the minute you understand this, there is a softening of your heart. Amen. There is a realization. I say, I've been wasting my time all these years trying to keep a law that leaves me nothing but nowhere but to death. The more I've tried, the more I've sinned. The more I have kept law, the more I have sinned. There is the minute I've embraced grace. All sin left me. All sin disappeared. All sin began to just say, this temple is the temple of the most high God. The honor of grace now lives on the inside. It doesn't matter what I think I am. Satan and Alonga, that very day, may Satan pack up in your life. May hey, Satan realize grace is free. We hide behind a set of rules. We hide behind a set of machiti kwe makomandi. Hia imuka kwea kuchechi nukufula maso. Hia imuka kwea kuchechi kuchitaso. Excuse me. When you come to the presence of God, just tell him, Lord, speak in this area of my life. I've struggled all night. I've labored all night. And I want you to hear him say, launch into the deep. Launch ye into the deep. You know what, what, what Peter did? Jesus told him, throw your nets. You know he threw one net because he didn't believe. He said, Allah, he threw one net. Bible say that net began to break because it was one. Some of you God is saying throw just one and you say oh remember you didn't prepare. I can you no bad you can you no prepare. You can you no wear a pano pasi ko ni shine na prepare mat prepare kumi. You can use chia. Set of rules, laws, lead you nowhere. They just lead you to sin even the more. They just lead you to realize church is even to us. It's better than Puerera Kuchalo. It's better than Osore Rapanja. This is what causes people to backslide because the true gospel has been hidden in a set of rules. The true gospel of Christ is that you don't need. To pay for salvation. All you need today is just to simply tell him, here I am. How many of you are frustrated with one area of your life you have trying, been trying to change and you have not succeeded? How many of you are struggling with a part of you that simply cannot let you go? You are trying because you think you can save yourself. It is time you just say, God, Speak in this area. Let your overshadowing love, your presence, just wash over. And today God is going to save some people. You don't have to come to church and things remain the same. The minute that you're going to begin to apply love in the areas where you have applied yourself, trying to help God save you, you will realize things will begin to change. When you allow Jesus, his place in your heart. There is a gentleness that comes upon your life. There is a sudden commitment to the things of God. You don't have to struggle and start to say, When you are saying, and they say the time for service is 9 o'clock, You'll be here at nine. Then it regardless of how far you stay, no one will wake you up. You'll be here. Because you know who you save and who you are. I'm looking for those people who know who they are. Those who say, I know him. If you don't know who you are, this is the time to rise up to your feet. Begin to say, Lord Jesus, I want you to speak into the lost part of me. I want you to come to the shores of my oceans, the shore of my life, where I've toiled and I've labored all these years, thinking that by keeping the law, by coming to church, I was saving myself. Thinking
believed that whatever I was doing, it was leading me to eternity. But today I realize I just need you to save me. I just need you to save me. You have been backsliding, you have been going backwards because you didn't understand the person of grace and what he has done for you, what he has paid already. It's already paid. You are in this place and you say, I need to meet the person of grace. I just need to know him. Just lift your hand. Every eye closed in this place. You're just saying, Lord, I just, I just need to come home today. I just need to come home. I've struggled. It's been too long. If there any area of your life you have struggled with, just lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. You struggled with an area in your life, something you thought you could handle on your own. It may be a temporary, it may be something that is so personal to you. Oh, Salon Dolora. It's not about you, Lord of God. It's Jesus speaking into that area. I don't want you to be coming to church and not change at all. Because you think it's about a set of rules. From today, the way we do things is going to change. We're going to embrace the love of Christ. Because only when Christ is inside us can we be able to touch others. Can we be able to change others? Can we be able to witness to another? Let the love of Christ grow even deeper. That's a beautiful step of faith you've taken. I just want you to leave your seat. And just come to the front and just come to the altar, lay it on the altar and say, Look, Jesus, you can speak in this area of my life. This part of my life, I've struggled with it. I've toiled with it. I've done all I know. Lord, enough is enough. I need a change. And I've just realized that the person of grace today he can touch me. The person of grace, he can touch me. Just move forward. Keep moving forward. The person of grace is going to change you. Just lift your hands and tell him, speak in that area of my life. That weak part. I've, I'm done struggling. Just tell him that. You don't have to do anything, just tell him I'm tired of struggling with lies, I'm tired of struggling with tempers, I'm tired of struggling with this weakness. You can